Welcome to episode 42 in this chess puzzle adventure series starring Bobby Fisherman, Average Joe, and Peter Potzer. Previously, Bobby Fisherman and Average Joe had been following the map maker to try to go where Peter Potzer was at. But on their way, the archaeologist had told Bobby Fisherman that the gold key that he was carrying around his neck can be used to open the treasure chest or a treasure chest in the dragon's lair. And that's where we pick up our story today. So they continued to follow the map maker as he led them out of the lost ruins and toward the abandoned village. Bobby said, where are we going? He said, I think I know where he took your friend. There is a particular house on the outskirts of the village. And not long after that, they arrived at this strange looking house that said puzzle training on a sign in front of, the, in front of it. The map maker bid them farewell and he left. Bobby Fisherman and Average Joe walked up to the door only to find that it was locked by this peculiar looking lock and it wouldn't open. At first they were wondering what to do, but Bobby noticed there was an old piece of paper tacked to the door. And on that piece of paper it said four things. It said all four digits are different. The sum of the first and fourth digits equals seven. The second digit is twice the first digit. And the third digit is the first digit plus one. Bobby Fisherman and Average Joe quickly realized that this was some sort of clue to help them unlock the door. Before I tell you what they, what conclusion they came to, if you would like to pause, what do you think the code for the lock on the door is? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, not long after, Average Joe said, I think I know what the solution is. I think it's 2435 because the 2 and the 5 add up to 7. The first digit is 2 and the second digit is 4. So that means the second digit is twice the first. And the third digit is the first digit plus 1. So the 3 is 2 plus 1. That makes sense. But when they went to try the code, they realized that the 2 in the very first digit was not functioning properly and they weren't able to open the door. They were confused for a moment when Bobby Fisherman had a realization. He said, wait a second, I think there's another code. And he said 4853, because the four and the three add up to seven. The four and the eight matches the requirement that the second digit is twice the first. And the third digit of five is the first digit plus one. They tried the code 4853, and sure enough, the lock opened, and they were able to enter the house. Upon entering the house, they found Peter Potzer sitting at a table with a chess book open in front of him, studying intensely. They said, hey, Peter, what are you doing here? He said, oh, hey, I'm working on my puzzle rating. The wolf dropped me off here at this puzzle training house, and I've been studying chess puzzles for the last month nonstop. They said, wow, have you been learning a lot? He said, actually, yes, my puzzle rating is up to 2793. And if I just solve this final puzzle, my puzzle rating will be 2800, just like Bobby Fisherman. Bobby and Joe were very surprising. Wow, that's great. Can you solve the puzzle and then we can get out of here? He said, yeah, let's go ahead and finish it. And this will put me at 2800. And with that, he showed them the puzzle that he was working on. So Peter Potzer presented them the following position. He said, it's white to play and get a draw, despite the fact that black has these pawns which are moving down the board in this direction. Before I tell you what Peter Potzer thought the solution was, what do you guys think if you'd like to pause, how can white save the game? If you had a chance to look at this, let's talk about what's going on here. So first of all, the two bishops against a lone king would be enough to checkmate. So if white is somehow able to capture all four of these pawns without losing a bishop, white could win. The problem, of course, is these guys right here are so far advanced that white has to be careful black just doesn't get a queen. Because if black gets a queen, then obviously that's not going to be good for white. So that is the major thing that's happening in this position. How do we stop these pawns if we're white? And by the way, you have to be very careful with your first move here because if you just let's just say, move the bishop to attack the pawn, you have to watch out that they don't just push it, and how are you going to respond? Now, this move actually could still get a draw, but it's not the best move, and the move in the solution is bishop to g1. Now, we'll talk about what I just said there if I confuse you in just a minute, but bishop g1 is the correct solution, and here's why. 
if black simply pushes the pawn to try to get a queen. Now you have the option to go bishop to d4 check. The king moves somewhere, and notice how your bishop is slicing across here. You can safely move this guy away, and black can't get a queen. If you ever push either of these pawns, you just simply take it, and now white's actually going to win. Okay, you just pick off the pawns, take all the pawns with your, you know, your, your bishops, and then you can checkmate. Okay, so black has to watch out for that. So black plays the move, uh, not a two, plays the move king to e5, and they stop you from going to d4 because now they just take you. So what do you do now? White to play and still save the game. There's only one move now. What's the move? If you had a chance to look at that, the move is bishop to c5. And yes, we're attacking the pawn, but there's a very clever idea here in how you're going to meet a2. Because of course, black's not going to just let you take the pawn. They're going to push it. They're going to try to get a queen. What do you do now? White to play and save the game. If you had a chance to look at that, the move is bishop takes a2. And you might be thinking, but Nelson, that doesn't look like it really accomplishes anything because we're still going to have the same problem of how do we stop this pawn, and we're now we're down a bishop, right? Well, that's going to make sense in just a minute why this move is important, but for now, just go with me. So you take that black recaptures, and like, like I said, you still do have the problem of how do you stop this queen, right? So what do you guys think? White to play, save the game. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the only move is bishop to f8, and you're setting up a skewer to come over here. And if, for example, black gets the queen, that's not going to cut it. You're going to be able to get a draw. Okay. But black, of course, sees your trick and plays the move king to f6. And they're stopping you from going there. They're just going to take you. And now it's not looking good because they still have the threat. You can't go here. What do you do? White to play and save the game. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, this is the really incredible moment in the puzzle. You play the move bishop to b4. And at first glance, it's like, how does that help us? I don't really see the issue here. Black's going to simply get the queen. Do you see the follow-up? White to play and save the game. That's correct. It's bishop to c3, which is a fork. So black has to take you. Otherwise, you're going to take their queen. But when they do, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Have we seen this before? Sorry. Uh, if I can draw arrows. Have we seen this before? It's a stalemate trap, guys. It's a stalemate trap, and the white king cannot move. All of black's pieces actually are involved in stalemating the king, which is pretty spectacular. And if you remember, earlier when I said you had to sacrifice your bishop, well, this is why. Because if you still had a bishop sitting on the board, this would no longer be a stalemate. But that was a crucial part of it, setting up uh, the stalemate trap. Now, earlier on in the puzzle... When I said that this was also a legitimate move, the reason was because you could get the same position if you do this, play bishop to b4, and here we go, you have the fork next move, okay? But bishop to g1 was a clever try because you actually gave yourself winning chances by going here, forcing black to do this, and then it got a little bit more tricky as you, you know, went around behind, and ultimately, you kind of get the same position, essentially, a little bit later where you can play bishop to b4. So, just wanted to clarify why I had said that. But that was the puzzle. Peter Potzer solved it correctly, and his new puzzle rating went up to 2,800. Having successfully solved that final puzzle with a new rating of 2,800, Peter Potzer said, you guys ready to go? And they said, yeah, but what about the wolf? Peter Potzer said, oh, the wolf left a long time ago. I've been free to come and go as I please. I just got so addicted to solving these puzzles, I just wanted to stick it out so that I could actually be useful as we go around Puzzle Island. Bobby Fisherman and Average Joe were quite impressed with Peter Potzer's work ethic and congratulated him, and they began to walk out of the house. Average Joe walked out first, Peter Potzer walked out next, and Bobby Fisherman walked out last. But as Bobby Fisherman was walking out of the door, someone reached down from above, snatched the golden key from around his neck, and scurried up, back up the roof and over the other side. Bobby Fisherman turned around to look to see who had taken the golden key, but all he saw was the top of the person's hat going down over the roof. And that's where we'll pick up the story next time. Thank you guys for watching. Please let me know if you like this kind of series. And I actually have a question I wanted to ask you guys. I'm toying with the idea of turning chess adventures into a game that you could actually play. Mobile game where you solve puzzles and you go around and actually can interact with Puzzle Island. 
If that sounds interesting, would you guys do me a favor? Just leave a comment. Let me know. And if not, that's okay too. I'm just trying to get some feedback on that. So really appreciate that. Thank you guys for watching and happy adventures on the chessboard. For those of you wondering who Bobby Fisherman might have seen going over the roof, I recommend going back and checking out episode 23 in this series. That might help you out.